Hello Guardians, it is Ubontis here. Gonna do another solo Nightfall run here, and this one is going to be on my Titan. So we've got the Shield Brothers again, and the Joyful Modifiers that we know to expect. Gonna have that Void Burn and Grounded, but we'll go over those modifiers here real quick. Void Burn, Brawler, don't go punching too much stuff. Grounded, and then of course Ironclad, gonna be more of the pain in the butt. But Grounded the big one, keep your butt on the ground, even I have a tendency to want to jump out of the way sometimes, so keep that in mind. I'm doing a voiceover, guys, afterwards, so if the commentary is a little off, we'll know why. I was going to try Word of Crota between Doom of Chelchus and Word of Crota. I've gone back and forth between the two. I do tend to like Doom of Chelchus more. Uh, Word of Crota, you can get a few more one-shots on things. Some of the shields you can't. I tried the Longbow Synthesis, actually, before I started, but I did switch over to Devil's Dawn. Uh, Devil's Dawn just has more capacity, so I think they nerfed the Longbow Synthesis along with a couple other ones in that archetype, basically just to go through and help those for PvP. So I was trying to mix up the armor as well, just to help with the hand cannon ammo. Um, but I did end up switching over to sniper rifle ammo later on. That was more beneficial. Helm of Saint-14, one of the few defender ones that I had. I probably could have picked up some others, but I thought it might be helpful in case I got overrun by a few guys. And that's most of the build. As for the rest of it, your standard um, weapons of light was pretty beneficial. And then a couple other things, rocket launcher and the other good stuff. So we're going to jump in and I'll see you guys on the other side. Alright Guardians, as soon as you load in, just start running as quick as you can. So I have switched my gear over from what I showed you originally. Still got the Hint Word of Crota, which I'll probably switch over to Doom of Chelchus after this. But I am doing a voiceover afterwards, as I said, so if the commentary doesn't quite sync up as usual, just kind of do it afterwards and react into what's on the screen. So it may not be quite on par as usual, but for some reason my mic wanted to glitch out and not catch the audio, so wanted to give it to you guys afterwards. But again, as I've said previously, just run by this section. If you throw a grenade and get a lucky kill on the way, maybe shoot one, you know, acolyte in the face or something like that, that's a quick kill. But I wouldn't spend long, too many time, there's a war going on, unless you just get a quick kill, just leave them alone, run on by, move on to the important part. And this part is where the void damage starts to come into play anyway, so things are going to die faster as it is. So once you get to the respawning restricted zone, you're going to have some scions with void shields come up there above you. Now, sometimes you can get these guys some damage, but unfortunately the hand cannon is not quite as effective at range as, say, Doom of Chelchus would be. So that's one of the reasons I'm just not quite of a fan of it. It's just that hand cannon range. While it feels a little more legit, they're just not quite as functional anymore, especially in PvE. In PvP, they're still good. Uh, but in PvP, or in PvE, the hand cannons just don't have quite the same feel. Even Fatebringer, unfortunately, just that range effect is really actually making a difference now. I mean, they do feel like more hand cannons, but what are you going to do? Can't win them all, right? So once those scions are down, go ahead and jump down, take out the legionnaires down below. You can punch some of them, but you might want to hit them at least once first before you do. Uh, just keep that one in mind. And then come in here, you know, pop their heads off. Goes pretty quick. Sometimes those headshots happen, sometimes I completely whiff. And we'll come up here, take these guys out. Again, just kind of keep shooting them. If they get close, you can always get one shot and punch them. And if you get your shield up, you'll be able to take a few more hits. But watch that Colossus off to your left. He will start unloading on you, and that's when it gets dicey. So, a little hard to aim when he's got a minigun hitting you many times over. So let that thing calm down for a second. Then you get a sniper shot into him, you'll stagger him. Get another one, and then, you know, three is definitely a wrap. But two, and even a scout rifle shot should pretty much end him quickly. Devil's Dawn does hit hard, so keep that one in mind. Then once you're up here, you can kind of play whack-a-mole. You're pretty much above everything that's going to be up here, so just shoot from above. If you've got a grenade, you can speed some of this stuff along. Um... You know, you can't get a good angle on them. Or if you just jump down, just be weary. You might have to punch a few guys, grab some ammo, and we'll go up and face the tank. Now for the tank, I would definitely bring out your sniper rifle. And for the Titan, I actually would say go weapons of light. If you've got a strong sniper, life, ri strong sniper rifle like this one, and you've also got something along the lines of um, decent amount of ammo, and you can do a lot of damage. So normally it's about 37,000. With Illuminate, I'm doing 50. It's taking three shots, basically my full clip to take out one of the wheels. I've only got to do this like three or four times. There's another clip. Wait for it. And just wait for that bomb to hit you. Use the bubble. And you can kill basically the entire tank before, you know, any of the guys basically can come up the ramp. They're coming up to the left, but if you can just focus on the back, wait for all the guys, come over to the other side of your bubble for some cover over here. I'm just trying to find which wheel is open. One more shot and it should be good here. And that's a wrap. So up here, when you're in the bubble, just be careful. I do have Saint-14 on, so if they walk in there, you're going to get blinded. Most of these guys should dissipate, which mm, the Scions did. A couple of the shield guys will be up there. 
And from here, you're going to have a few enemies down below. Now, normally I'd say, hey, spend a minute, go kill the guys that are down there. But as this is more of a speed run, I'm just going to run on to the other side. I'm going to shoot this guy because he's basically taking me off real quick. Blow his head off. Don't worry about the ammo. You'll get more later on. And then just come back here and start working the next area. One thing you can quickly do, just throw a grenade out there. Take some of these guys out. The main thing you want to watch out for right here is those Axiom Bolts. Axiom Bolts from that Centurion uh, are going to be painful. They're void. They're almost a one-shot, if not completely. So, you know, blow a rocket on them. It's not that big of a deal. This is the point where Doom of Chelch just tends to start to pay off a little more. Just because I'm not doing as much damage as I would like. So, time to pull out the Sniper. Pop some heads. Reload, of course, at the worst moment. And again, right there, I could probably be a little more accurate with my scout rifle and pick those guys off. These guys go pretty quickly. Grenade does wonders. Grab some ammo and let's run. Try and get as much as I can. So first section tank and everything done in less than five minutes. And then from here, just try and skate up as quick as you can. We'll get to the next little room. You're going to have a special ammo box in the next room. So what I will usually do is use my sniper rifle um, just to take out most of the guys. Then come back to the left real quick, pick up the ammo, and be good to go. Usually sometimes if you use a different gun, you might have a chance for some heavy ammo to drop, so it just depends on what you need. But some people come in here, pop the ammo box quickly. It's like most people are not completely out of sniper ammo at this point. If you are, of course, pop it. Otherwise, save it, and then just use your sniper rifle to pick these guys off. Now in the back, you're going to have one Colossus. You want to pick him off pretty early on. Again, three sniper shots will do it. And again, you know, put a shot through the guy's shoulder. Still went clean through and took out the uh, Colossus as well. But here you can pick off tons of these guys. Phoenix, the Phalanx will almost go down with uh, a headshot, but not quite. They're going to need a second. But these guys, especially with Firefly, I love exploding heads. Kablooey. And again, this is a good place if you've used Heavy to kill some enemies. You were using Primary before that. And then all of a sudden you went and you're using Special here. You can get a Rainbow Medal if you need to, so it's always a reasonable time. Now one thing some people don't know is if you just come up to this door, it will open. Now you could pop your bubble here and just wait it out. I get a little dicey in the health, health department, but as soon as it opens... Strafe back and forth a little bit. You could turn around, get a couple shots as you're backing down the hallway. Tactical metal, because, you know, survive by the skin of my teeth. But again, you can pop a few guys' heads off here. Switching over to uh, Duma Chelsea's here. I don't even remember seeing myself do that, but it is important. Just kind of a good thing to have that scout rifle for the range. Um, if you don't have one of these void primaries, it's just going to be a little harder if you got the one from Wrath of the Machine, the pulse rifle. Still pretty solid, I think. So check that one out. I haven't got it yet, so I'll have to try it later. So once you come in here, you're going to look at what ammo box you get. So there, I have no special ammo. I got the heavy ammo box, which I'm excited about. Take out these three little bombs. You don't ever want some random explosion to cause one of those to go off and have a painful death. So we're in the boss room six and a half minutes into the strike. So pretty solid run so far. Scan this one and just go ahead and check. Still got Hamill same 14 on. Pretty much good to go. So when the boss comes out, I wouldn't try and throw any super, any crazy amount of damage, rockets, anything. Right now, all you need to do is just wait for him to actually get a health bar. He's immune. Not much you can do. So wait for him to do that. And then when he's paused, it is the best time to really try and get your damage on him. Now you can use a scout rifle like this, start popping his head, get some good crits. They're about 8,500 with the Doom of Chelchus. Or if you get a sniper rifle shot, 53,000. What you're looking for is about 180,000 damage to send him over the edge. And you want to pull the enemies when he's on the side of the room he's headed to. So you can kill the enemies on the other side without having to worry about them. I'll try and get those all together. You saw the rainbow metal go off, so that one worked well. And then from here, all you're going to worry about is the three phalanx. So at this point with the phalanx, what you're going to be doing is basically um, just kind of working them around while managing the boss's location. Um, as the boss moves around, just make sure you watch your radar. Make sure he's not going to come up behind you and smash you. It's kind of a bad way to go down. And then at this point, once the three phalanx are down, you're just trying to get as much damage in as you can. I'm getting some pretty lucky snipes there. I'll take them. All you're trying to get them to is in the word Valus, V-L-A-L-U. On the U, once it comes to the right side of the U, when you get to the bottom of the hoop, that's when he's pretty much going to leave the room, about now. So you want to pull out your rockets. I'm always terrible about reloading those things. And try and clear out this side of the room over here. So take out what you can. It's never a bad time to blow a rocket on some of these enemies. Phalanx over here with the shield, and then look for the Centurion. Terrible, terrible grenade throw there, of course. But if you can get this one down, the one thing you do want to watch out for is those um, wonderful little Scions and their arc wave attack. The thing has some pretty long range and actually just hits pretty hard, so just try and dodge that one, keep strafing them. Um, as they are on a lower level, if you can stay you know, somewhat back, you might not get tagged by all of them. Pick up anything you got here, and we're on to boss number two, Valus Tildurin. 
So this is the mortar guy. He needs some height to be able to hit you, and he hurts, of course, if you get hit by two of them, or if you jump in the air and you take the grounded damage, you're going to be in pain. But we're going to step over here into the cheese spot. I say it's a cheese spot because you don't really have to worry about too much. Now the reason it works is the geometry above. You can see when he shoots it up, it's got to have some room to get to you, and just the way the angles are in the walls, there's a lot of things that can hit before it gets to you. So it's a pretty safe spot over here. Once the reinforcements come in, you can throw a rocket to the other side of the room, but honestly, I would just switch over and go with your scout rifle if you can. Blow your ammo that way and save your rockets, because if you got a heavy ammo box over there, it works well. And then you can use your rockets where you need to in more pressing matters. Now, these guys really aren't too bad. There's no guys that have rockets or anything like that. You've got the one Centurion over there, but he's not even that bad. He's got a solar shield, but he's just kind of annoying. Keep you, and the nice thing about being over here by the wall is the enemies who come out on the right don't get just an open shot on you. So you've got this kind of barrier on your side protecting you while you work these enemies down. Once he drops, um, here you're going to see basically there's nothing left. So you get his damage down just like the other guy. You can pump his damage down really fast with a sniper rifle. Again, just wait for his head to stagger. And in between each stagger, you can get some damage. Or your option here is to go ahead and turn around. And I like to come over here because once you basically send him out of the room, you're going to have some adds to kill. But once the adds go down, you're going to want to be able to be at this side of the room when possible so you can manage what's coming up. So now is a good time to, you know, blow some heavy ammo. I've got the heavy box coming. You're going to have some Centurions. You're going to have a Legionnaire coming. You want to take these guys out as fast as you can. So now the Majors start coming out and it gets a bit dicey. Some of the Majors have rockets. And those little rocket packs are pretty painful. Again, terrible with my rocket throws on this run. Sorry, guys. Now things do get a little bit dicey at a point. I think I popped my bubble here. So just keep moving around trying to dodge these rockets. They still hurt, so just be careful. Keep strafing. You gotta save your butt. That's what the bubble is for. Unfortunately, the hunter doesn't get that option. That's why it took me a few more tries than my Titan and my Warlock. I got those on the first try. Maybe second. Uh, but in general, hunter took me quite a long time to go through. But over here, of course, weapons of light. Just something to survive in for a little while. Get recovery if you need it. Pop these guys in the head. Now, once all the enemies die, you're going to pull the bosses back out. Now, this is where you're going to glitch the melee guy. And you can do this in the beginning if you want to as well. It's kind of your option. But what you want to do is pull him around to the back of the pillar while you run back to the cheese spot. Now, if, he line of si if you line of sight him while he's back there, what you're going to do is get him to stop in the back. Now, normally, if he's this close to me, he won't run back. He'll usually run forward off to my right, kind of down in the pit off to the right. But if he does run back like he did, you're going to have him where you want him. He's behind that pillar, and you can control basically the rest of the fight from here. So what you're going to do is move forward a little bit, basically get out of the spot, and he's going to come out of the left or right, depending on which side he kind of focuses on. And basically, as long as you stay relatively close to the back wall, he's not going to come too close to you. So peek out for a second, mess with him for a little bit, and move back. One nice thing about that is, once you have him there, just keep your butt to this wall, and you won't have to deal with him while dealing with the ads as well. So use the scout rifle, try and pick off some of these ads from a distance. You're going to have some coming out on the right, so watch out for those. Grenades work well. And again, try not to move very much, so manage the ads from this corner if you can. And as they creep up, just be careful about them. Again, if you pop a bubble or if you need one, now is a reasonable time to do it, uh, just because you're going to be doing a lot of stuff in here. So as most of the ads are down, the radar is completely clear. The, guy, my, the mortar guy on my left is just hitting the ceiling. Now I'm just going to keep popping this boss in and out until I'm ready. Now's a good time to make sure you pop three of coins, pop any synths you need, reload your rockets. It's a good time to do all that stuff. But again, creep forward a little bit, fire your, fire your gun, let him fall back, and just rinse and repeat. But again, that place where I shot over there on the right, sometimes he'll be over there. If that's the case, just run towards the pillar, try and get out of there as quick as you can. Something like a, a hunter, if you use Bones of Ao to get some, that extra jump and height to get out of there. Otherwise, make sure you just get away from him. If he does that smash and you have that grounded damage, you have a risk of dying. But if he is there, try and run quickly. Don't get too close to the boss. On the left over there, you might get him to move, which will throw things off. But if you can run to the back, you do that circle around the pillar again, try and line up sight him, and then try and set him up back there in the back. But again, this is mostly a rinse and repeat. Move forward, pull him out, step back, and then shoot him when his head pops out. Again, we're only 13 minutes into the strike here, and we're almost at the end. So, going pretty smoothly so far. But again, sometimes he will be down there on the right, sometimes a little closer. You can peek around the corner, sometimes do some damage, but it's risky once you start doing enough. Sometimes he'll slowly walk forward, and the next thing you know, he's right around the corner going to smash you. So just be careful about that. And again here, make sure you got illuminated on for that bonus damage so you can do a lot to him. Also for your rockets, when these enemies come out, that illuminated damage is going to be that big bonus to drop some of these adds. 
should go down right here. What you're going to do is go around this little angle in the wall to the next one and then peek around behind it so you've got some cover from all the ads that are going to come out behind where the boss is. Now pop your bubble so you've got some cover and just two small spots that you can shoot between. And again, it's a good place to pop in, reload your rocket, and then focus on the majors if you can. You've got a major phalanx, major centurion who's going to be a real big pain in the butt. If you can get that centurion, kind of focus him down. It's a nice one to take out quickly. And then just look for the rest of the enemies. Again, chunk of grenade if you need it. Pop him down. A couple scions, no big deal. And then look for the last major if there's anybody out there. But again, as you're over here by this wall, you're avoiding the mortar gun, basically simplifying the fight. From here, you pretty much got the easy mode. Just don't get sloppy, which is what I usually do. Is what kills me. I can get here half the time and then I do something stupid. One, be very careful with rockets. When you do enough damage to him, he's going to jump in the air and move. Usually you don't want to be too far, too close by. And as you can see, doing damage to yourself, not a big, not a good thing. But when he jumps, you're going to be like, oh, I can shoot a rocket. And then he's going to do exactly what he does here. Pop the shield up and you will fire a rocket straight in your face. And as you're going to be probably using the same type of damage as the burn, you're dead. But other than that, pretty much what you want to do is try and get him to move. And then again, once you step in and get him to move, he's still got mortars in the air. So make sure you're moving the entire time. Just make sure you're moving, shuffling side to side, strafing. If you're going to go in for damage, just make sure you're continually moving. Don't get too close. Try and get that sniper shot off if you can. And once you get a couple, just make sure you move. Again, he's going to be firing those mortars constantly. Jump in here and just keep those shots going. Be careful you watch where he goes, but see that mortar was still coming down even though I did enough damage to him. And again, I'd rather use the sniper shots in a primary or grenades, anything like that. Again, don't get too close. He does smash the ground now. Uh, but look for any ammo you got around. Pop a synth if you can find a safe spot, which may or may not be manageable. Uh, but pretty much just keep working around. And again, wait for him to land. Sometimes you get a good spot at it. And just keep putting the shots into him. Even a sniper is going to do pretty good damage. But if you get a crit, that 50,000 pop is going to be solid. And again, keep moving. Shot him out of midair. Nice. And that's pretty much a wrap, guys. That is going to do it for the Titan run. Weapons of Light, nice benefit if you need it. If you need a little more survivability, just go blessing. Take a little longer, be a little safer. Other than that, guys, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Um, trying to go with speed here. Did it in about 16 minutes total. Not too shabby. I saw Esoteric did a little faster, so hats off to him. Nice job. I always try and give you guys the little explanations and guides, so it takes me a little bit longer. But thank you guys for tuning in. Appreciate everything, of course. Not the greatest drop, but it could be worse. And if you guys enjoyed the video, drop that like down below. Subscribe to the channel. I'll keep the content coming your way. And again, had to do this voiceover afterwards. So if it was just a little off in timing or placement, um, I apologize about that. So if the voice doesn't quite match up with the visuals, again, my apologies. But hopefully I'll try and get that timing just about right. And other than that, thank you guys for tuning in and have a great one. I will talk to you soon. Enjoy your weekend.